Here are 20 tiny habits that I do every single day. And when I say tiny, some of them literally only take a few seconds. I credit these tiny habits with making me fitter, happier, healthier, more disciplined, less tired, and they've improved my concentration, friendships, and relationships. Hi, my name is Rich, and I make videos about the positive things I do today that my future self will thank me for. In the past, whenever I've wanted to make a change to my life, I've always shot way too high. The aspiration is great, but my goals were always too lofty or vague. Be more mindful, eat more healthily, run a marathon. I always started with the end goal in mind, which is totally the wrong approach. The best way is to start really, really small with a tiny habit. These tiny habits that I now do every day are super easy to implement into my routine because they take so little time. But when done consistently, they create a snowball effect and can lead to lasting change. And the first of these is the positive affirmation. The as soon as you wake up in the morning and place your feet on the ground, you state a positive affirmation such as, Today is going to be a good day. I've said this many times through gritted teeth because at that point in the morning, it may not feel like it's going to be a good day. But this positive affirmation, which will be the very first thing you do that day, is a really powerful way to set the tone for the rest of the day. Drink a glass of water. Now that I'm up and about, the next thing I do is drink a pint of water. It doesn't need to be this much, but a glass of water first thing immediately helps rehydrate the body and increases your alertness, much more so than if you go for coffee straight away. Mobility exercise. Admittedly, as soon as I've drunk some water, the next thing I do is make coffee. But whilst I'm waiting for this, I stand in the kitchen and do a mobility exercise, sliding down the side of my body, round and back up the other side. And I will do this about five times. Any kind of mobility exercise, when done consistently, is great for long-term strength and all-round good health five seconds in a cold shower. For my birthday this year, my wife bought me a Wim Hof Experience Day, which culminated in a 90 second full body immersion in the River Tweed in January when there was snow on the ground. By immersing yourself into the cold, you step outside your comfort zone, challenge yourself and test your mental toughness. And all of this can be achieved by starting with as little as five seconds of cold water in a shower every day, and then building this time up over the coming weeks. I was particularly struck by the story of actress and writer Dune Keegan, who said cold water swimming makes you fearless. My son had leukemia when he was nine. Every morning before going to the Royal Marsden, I would throw myself into Tooting Lido. Then I could turn up on the ward, have a bit of resilience and not cry in front of him. It's like magic energy make your bed. In a famous speech given at the University of Texas, Admiral William McRaven said, If you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. The thinking behind this is that the process of making your bed first thing in the morning means that you've completed your first task. This small sense of achievement can then help you do another task and can kickstart a chain of other good decisions that will give you a sense of taking charge. Eat protein with every meal. One of the most useful books I've ever read about fitness and nutrition is Tom Venuto's book, Burn the Fat, Feed the Muscle. The key thing that I adopted after reading this book was to have protein with every meal. For breakfast, that means that I now tend to have oats, fruit, and yogurt. And the basis for lunch and dinner will always be some sort of lean protein, ideally with lots of fibrous carbohydrates like broccoli, spinach, cauliflower, and asparagus. Take the stairs. Medical researchers have found that if you take at least 50 steps upstairs every day, you reduce your risk of heart disease and stroke by 20%. Supposing there are 13 steps in a flight of stairs, if you walk up just one flight of steps every day, in one year, you will have climbed higher than Mount Snowden. If you walk up two flights of stairs every day, in one year, you will have climbed higher than the Matterhorn. Transform chores into rewards. I hate cleaning, but I hate living in a dirty, cluttered environment far more. When I started listening to audiobooks two years ago, it was a revelation. When I realized I could combine the joy of listening to a book with the monotony of doing household chores, everything changed. I now commit to listening to at least one chapter of a book every day, only whilst doing tasks that I don't enjoy doing. Give the gift of photography. I'll confess that I don't do this every day, so strictly speaking, I have lied in this video, but I do do this regularly and it's so well received that it's definitely worth including here as a tiny habit. Last year, my brother and I bought my parents a skylight photo frame. There's nothing original about digital photo frames except that this one allows us to send photos directly to it via email or an app. So my parents are now constantly updated with our adventures and they totally love it. I also use the TouchNote app, which allows you to send photos from your phone as printed postcards. In a way, this is even better because the photos are printed and become a tangible thing, which is how they should be viewed. Sending photos to friends and family is one of the very best ways of staying in touch and strengthening relationships. Get rid of one item every day. 
This is a very simple concept and was really helpful for me in starting to declutter all of my possessions. To begin with, I would find one item in my house, whether it was a piece of clothing, a kitchen utensil, or an old bit of camera kit that I was happy to part with. I added it to a pile and at the end of the week, I either sold, gave away, or recycled the seven objects. If parting with one item a day seems like too much, then you can always adopt the one in, one out policy, whereby you only allow yourself to bring a new item into your house if you're prepared to get rid of one thing you already own. Having kids, I found that if I didn't keep on top of my clutter, it quickly spiraled out of control. Drink a fresh green smoothie. Over the last 12 months, I've eaten more spinach than I've had in my entire life. Every day, I will blend up some fresh fruit with a ton of spinach, maybe some avocado and some frozen berries to make a nice cold green smoothie. I pretty much get my five portions of fruit and vegetables in one fell swoop, and it tastes amazing. Replace the word should with could. This is a really valuable lesson I learned from The Chimp Paradox by Steve Peters. The word should is a terrible authority figure. If I say I should go for a run, it implies there's an obligation to do so and there'll be consequences if I don't do it. It's demotivating and will make me feel bad. But if I say I could go for a run, there's a possibility there and a choice to be made. I'm in control of that choice and have the freedom to do what I want. That is far more liberating and far more motivating. Breathe through your nose. Breathing through your nose will improve your lung capacity, regulate your heart rate, filter out pollutants, prevent dehydration, and enhance mental focus. But it takes practice and I constantly need to remind myself to do this. Dumb down your phone. The beauty of this is that I've only needed to do it once to get the long-term benefits. It was a bit extreme at first, but it's totally worth it. Firstly, I changed my home screen to a black page so there's nothing on it. Secondly, I put all my apps into the app library so that no apps appear when I unlock my phone apart from the camera app, which is the one I use a lot. Thirdly, and this was a big one, I deleted X or Twitter, Instagram, and any other apps that I use for entertainment purposes. And finally, I set up a shortcut that enables me to press the side button on my phone to make everything black and white. This just makes everything on my phone even more unappealing to use. The next tiny habits are all things that I do in the evening. And the first of these is the three, two, one rule before bed. This is something that I learned from the legend that is Ali Abdal. Three hours before going to bed, no more food. Two hours before going to bed, no more fluids, including water. One hour before going to bed, no more screens. I also ensure that I stop drinking caffeine 10 hours before bed, and these tiny habits have really helped with me falling asleep much easier. 60 second plank. After brushing my teeth, I do a 60 second plank. Resistance training is really important and I find that a simple plank exercise really helps with my core strength, which is important for my running. It's good for my posture and improves my flexibility as well. It's worth doing this first thing in the morning as well, prior to coffee. And WAP. Once I'm fully ready for bed, I will grab my Remarkable 2 tablets, but this works just as well with a pen and paper, and I will do my two-minute journaling exercise called AMWAP, which stands for as many wins as possible. Reflecting on the day I've just had, I write down as many positive things that have happened. When you focus on the small wins, you are reaffirming that the world is a good place to be in. This simple exercise alone has done wonders for my mood and my outlook on life three key tasks for tomorrow. After my journaling exercise, still using my Remarkable 2 tablet, I will then write down the three most important tasks that I want to get done the following day. The first of these will be the most important task and the one that I start first thing in the morning. This really simple act of planning the next day, which takes me all of one minute, allows me to make the best possible start to the next working day. Remove phone from bedroom. I plug my phone into a charger in the hallway outside my bedroom and I now wake up with an alarm clock instead. It took me years to get around to doing this, but I've now got out of the habit of reaching for my phone first thing in the morning and this makes me infinitely happier. Bed by 10 p.m. And my final tiny habit is to make sure that I'm in bed by 10 p.m. This usually means starting the process of getting ready to go to bed at 9.30. I confess that this was a bit of a shock to the system when I started doing it as I very much used to be a night owl, but my body is adjusted and prioritizing sleep and taking it seriously has made a huge difference to all areas of my life. So those are the 20 tiny habits that I do every day, which only take a matter of minutes. I genuinely believe that when they are performed together on a daily basis, they can become life-changing. If you would like to know more about the journaling exercise I talked about in this video and how to get started with this, then you can find out all about this here. Thank you very much for watching. And if you'd be so kind as to hit the like button and then subscribe to the channel, I'd be extremely grateful. See you in the next video.